All right, lads, before we start today's yarn, I want to shout out Manscaped. They're supporting today's episode of The Search. They've launched a new product, the Lawnmower 4.0, right? It's the best clipper for shaving down there. Legit, it's the best clipper. You know all them other clippers, they cut you, they graze you, this and that. It's the best clipper and I got a, I got a code for you. If you go to manscaped.com, you get 20% off by using the code the search. You can click the link in the description, it'll be there. I'll go to manscaped.com. Make sure you use the code the search, you get 20% off. Gun clipper, lad, go check it out. Hey, it's- All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Search. Welcome back. Today's guest was thrust into the spotlight at just 18 years old when footage of him at 16 being restrained in a spit hood and assaulted by correctional officers at Dondale Youth Detention Center appeared in the media, leading to a royal commission into juvenile detention. Since then, he's been on a journey of reflection and growth and through activism and now music, he's making big strides in his mission to show the world that he's more than just a boy in the hood. It's an honor to have this young man on the show. Welcome to the search, Dylan Vola. Doing that like. Nah, thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, good, brother. Good, 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 good. Nice, brother. Um, Bruh, I remember saying this on the, on the news, bruh. Yeah. I remember saying that. How many years ago did this come on the news? Came out about six years ago, I think. About six years yeah, ago. About six years ago. Now. Bro, I remember this. I was in AFJ then. I just remember like... Young fellas, so it was you. Yeah, it was me and a few. And what the friends. the juvie Uskrays were like, what, what happened, bro? Power, like, excuse power, just the whole rundown. Power trip and bullies, that's how I put yeah, it down. But they I can read it from here. Yeah. I can sit there and go, they done this, they done that. But, like, explain it, you know what I mean? They had a big crew of them. The yeah. boss at the time was the referee, was their big trainer, the referee. And, and they're like, all the youth workers. He, had a whole, he went and hired a whole group of them, just little mus- muscled out fighters to come in and do that job because he thought that physical violence on against young people kids. was the way to go oh yeah where if you put out no matter how angry i'll admit i could skits out sometimes i wouldn't but that was the that was the inner scared kid i wasn't yeah. like I, I grew up obviously you've had a lot of followers on these podcasts and that they're a lot harder made for the streets i'll admit i'm not one of those kids that was made for the streets yeah, i just yeah, happened yeah. i just happened to fall to that fall to the streets to look for the protection look for the Andrew, big bro. brother figs, yeah. look for the father figure that i never had Try and things look for going f- on inside yeah just try yeah, to look for a family that i never had and i guess i got lost trying to i got lost to who i am trying to find something that i'm not so what when when did you first go to juvie i'm um, well, first in the juvenile attention at 11 years old and and this all happened where like where did you grow up um, so i was originally i was born in adelaide i'm not jetty man yep. my mum was adopted so i haven't really gotten to meet all that side of the family yep, yep. um my mum was a bad alcoholic at a young age i was sexually assaulted within the home in your adopted home? No, yeah, my mum, in my mum, or in our household, oh, my mum's household. household. Yep, yep. Um, and then from there, I guess, not really knowing how to deal with that sort of stuff at a young age, not even knowing what really was going on. And then realising my mum was an alcoholic at the time, and drank a lot, was going to school. She was never really violent and stuff towards us, but just drinking and watching her yeah, actions yeah. is where I kind of learnt my actions from. Yep. Seeing her have old interactions with the police, seeing her drinking a lot, seeing yep. this, you know, being 10 years old and seeing a grown man come to the house and beat her with a baseball bat in front yep. of my eyes. I was that scared little boy that could just stand there and watch, really. Couldn't yep, really do yep, nothing. Yep, but yep. So I guess I, all that sort of trauma built up, you know. All this happened in Adelaide, sorry? No, nah, this... After started, Adelaide? Yeah, yeah, after Adelaide. So she started drinking. We ended up moving while she was in trouble with the housing. And I think welfare, from what I was told, welfare was on her back about us kids. So she packed up and made us all leave, to Adela- uh, leave Adelaide to Alice Springs. Which, to Alice Springs? Yeah, which oh, really yeah. we didn't want to. We didn't How old were you when you got there, bro? I would have been about seven. Seven? Maybe eight. And yeah, when around. you lived in Adelaide, you lived like around the, the, the town? Yeah, around... Uh, and you moved in Alice yeah, Springs, you would have been spinning out, yeah, bro. Yeah, when I was in Adelaide, my great uncle and my great aunt, they were the closest to me. That's who I love staying with. They used to spoil me and look after me. Yeah. And I guess I tried that, but with my... Behavior, they were old, you know. So with my behavioral issues and shit like that, sometimes it was, they just couldn't handle it. And yeah, that's fair yeah. enough on them. I don't blame them. Yeah. So my mum did what most most black fellas do. Mm. When we're scared, we run. Yeah, we yeah, try yeah. and run from us. She tried running from her problems. Yeah. She took them to Alice Springs, but she might have been running from her problems. But that ended up pushing problems onto us, having yeah. no one. And I started going out of welfare. So it was just you in Alice Springs? Yeah, it was you just me and my siblings? sister. Yeah, yeah me and my big sister and my mum. And yeah, at the yeah. time, me and my big sister was unbreakable. I'd go to my sister when I was, that was... To be honest, my sister was like my big brother. I'd look to her to protect me when I was a little kid. I used to yeah, look up yeah. to her. And then she um, 
on 15, you know, she started going out in the streets, stuff like that. She ended up pregnant. Mm. I guess that's when I kind of lost myself is when I lost my sister in a way. I kind of mm. lost myself and I was out on the streets. It wasn't doing, I'm like, you know, I've never broke into a house in my life. Yeah. And I'm just not because I'm scared of someone catching me in the house, but because I'm scared of going in and doing what's happened to me. I'm, I don't want to scare another little kid. Yeah. I don't like yeah. that shit. Yeah. So it's more of, that's just that. Don't get me wrong. I've stood on the corner and waited for the older boys to come out and jumped in. And I've always been the driver ever since I was a little kid. You know, just, mm-hmm. I've always been the driver. The ten years old driving all the older boys around in the stolen whips, but I just couldn't go into a house. I couldn't do that sort of shit. So it started off with going out with the older boys and doing that sort of shit. My first ever charge was actually I broke my mum's window. She called the police on me. Yeah. She thought she's welfare parent. From what she says, welfare told her the only way I'd get help is if she rang the police and did something. <laughs> and that was the worst thing she did. I went to, the, I went into the juvie. Yeah, and I've been the same. When since. was that? Ten, eleven. I was eleven years old. Eleven yeah. years old, in juvie. So juvie in um, no, Alice Springs. Sorry, that's yeah. Dondale. No, that's what they back then they used to call it Arundel House. It was just a holding center. Oh really? Just, yeah. So you used to go in there. If you get more than three days, you get shipped and shaped straight up to Down, and then that's where they had Dondale. Oh, it so wasn't da- until, Dondale's in Darwin. Yeah, in Darwin. and that's like. Six, seven... 1,500 kilometres. 1,500 kilometres? Yeah, 1,500 kilometres from Alice Springs. So that's it's far, right? It's further than Sydney to Alice Springs. What the... Fuck. Yeah. No, I didn't think it was that. Yeah, so they're yeah. shipping you to a different world. Yeah, pretty much. And for when you... And when that, that's part... That would be the bigger part of the punishment as a kid. It's not so much being in the cells. Yeah. It's getting sent so far away I put from it this everyone. Way. When I go to jail now, I prefer to be in my cell 24-7. I don't yeah. like coming out. I don't like coming out of that cell because I know every day being out of that cell... Yeah gives the guards another opportunity to set you up, whether it's putting you in with fellas that they're going to pay to bash you, yeah. or whether it's so they can write all these fake reports to put into court to make when you go sentencing to fuck yeah, you up. Yeah, yeah. When I go down now, I dodge, just tell them, leave me in myself. Yeah, there's a lot to dodge. I don't come out. Yeah. So when, was, so when was the first time you went up to Dondale? That would have been when I was either 11 or 12, because the first time I only went in for three days. Yeah. I was in that welfare, older old boys introducing me to like, we shit yeah, like that yeah, back yeah. in Alice Springs. It wasn't really... You know, like I've listened to your story and fellas like Keenan and other yeah. fellas where they're around here, they're surrounded by heroin and yeah, ice and yeah. stuff. Alice Springs was, really wasn't that really that like, bad for yeah. that back then, you know. It's only just started making its way there. Oh, so no I didn't way. experience with heavy yeah. drugs until I was 16. I was just back then just smoking weed. To be honest, I didn't even like drink. I used to be that little kid that just wanted to fit in with people. I used to pretend yeah. to sit there and drink and pretend to get drunk just so yeah, I could fit yeah, in yeah. with the older boys, just so I could be a part of a, you know, a family, a little clique, yeah, a little group. Yeah. And I guess that fucked me long run. Looking at it then, I don't even know why the fuck I did that shit because it's gotten me to where the point yeah. where I am now. So uh, when you went to Dondale, where yeah. these initial things happened, was it always the way, see uh, like, see how you already explained how matey that ran it, whatever, got all these heroes to come in, roughies up, bashes yeah. and that. Was it always like that since you were a kid? Or did yeah, it-, it was like that since the first time I went in. Like the first time I went in, I, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't a perfect little kid. I had anger problems. I used to skit out, say things that I regret now and know that it was bad saying it. Like mm-hmm. I used to tell guys I'm going to fuck their kids and shit like that. Obviously, I was their age. I wasn't some older fella and yeah. shit like that. And I know that I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. But I was, an ang- I was an angry little kid that had shit done to him and wasn't being able to direct it in a positive way or even yeah, talk yeah. to counseling wasn't getting psychiatrists or psychologists shit like that yeah. was only getting psychiatrists only time psychiatrists or psychologists would see you is to write a report to when you go on a sentence so they can give yeah, to the yeah. judge to make you look stupid and get you a longer time yeah. and I can see you as a 24 year old adult now I'd say that what I some of the shit that I said or even spitting on some of the officers I shouldn't have done I don't regret spitting on the officers. Don't get me wrong, because that was my way. <laughs> don't get me wrong. That was my way of self-defense. It wouldn't, I wouldn't just I be standing crazy. there. I wouldn't yeah. just be standing there having a conversation yeah. and spit in your face. Yeah. It'd be after being restrained or bashed, and when yeah, they try yeah. and push off you to run out the cell, I'd jump no, up and I'd I'm spit laughing on them because I completely agree. With but yeah, yeah. it is what it is. I yeah. regret it's some of it. It's some juvie, of it, lad. it wasn't just. Juvie. It wasn't just having a conversation, yeah. spitting your face. It was after they rough you up and they go to try and jump up. You know, they do that little cheeky push you into the mm. ground and try and run out. I used to just be that quick off my feet and get up and turn when they're closing the door and spit straight on them. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Did, did what I did and I did my time for it. I used to go to court, play guilty, and I'd get more time in jail for it. Mm. So, like, bro, like, you're living like that. Is a was that type of stuff that happened, bro? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like yeah. learn for myself too. What come out like, what the video footage? What specifically was it footage of? Like, what, what had happened then? 
we well, the style of when I was 12 years old, I think some of the, well, to be honest, the video footage that really shocked the nation yeah. was me in a restraint chair. It's like they'd never seen something like that happen in Australia before. What people really don't know is that video footage that came out of me when I was 16 years old. Yeah. I was put in a restraint chair my first time when I was 12 years old in Alice Springs Police Station, but there's no video footage of that. Oh, That'd so be this record. is like, you've that been, wasn't in, even the first you've been time. in plenty. That, wasn't sec- you, that was you've the been second in time. Before, the first yeah. time they put me in my jocks in the middle of the police station in front of everyone when I was 12 years old. Oh, that's and then sad. the second time was when I was in the Alice Springs prison and they try and blame it because I was self-harming. It wasn't because I was self-harming. So they put you in a restraint chair and, and what? Like so you'd already know, obviously, what the yep. at-risk procedure is. When someone threatens suicide, they put you in with the in the safe cell yep. with the with the non well, mattress. Non- yeah, I was already yeah, on that. In there, so yeah. I was already on that with, on with the at no, with the non rip sheets and shit. Yep. And I just kept kicking the doors and kicking their office window because they had me in the cell. And I yep. was just angry. Fucking, yeah, what yeah. else could I do? I was sitting in there angry. And that was their way to punish me. They yeah. thought, fuck it. They would keep kicking that and keep annoying us. Yeah. So they come in, they put the hands through the thing, I put my hands through the thing, and like they do, they handcuff, put the pole through. Yeah. They brought the restraint chair, and I was thinking, fuck, I've been in this for a while. The first time, I was only in there for like 15, 20 minutes as a little kid to try and yeah. calm me down, whatever they did. But in this time, fuck, man, it felt like it was, I was in there for 24 hours. It was about two and a half to three hours, but they'd turned the in camera. In a restraint chair? Yeah, in a restraint chair. They'd, they'd, at they'd, 16, so this is happening in juvie, or? So I was... That's, that's the thing. So at the time, restraint chairs weren't legalized for kids. Yeah. And they had me over in an adult prison. Yeah. So they automatically must have thought they can use adult, adult tech, yeah, techniques yeah. On, a, on a minor. So they chucked me in a restraint chair with a spittled over my face. But obviously, as someone that's been in jail, you probably had a spittled on yourself before or even seen I haven't. them. I have seen them. But you'd know that the black part is supposed to go around your mouth so you can't yep. spit. Yep, yep. Well, that's not weird. If they were worried about them getting spit on, they would have had it on probably if people go back and look at it. They actually had the elastic pulled down so the tight part was around my neck and oh, the no mesh, way. I could still spit through the mesh if I wanted to spit yeah, it. Yeah. So, so it's just wrapped around your throat? Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. They just had Fuck. the tight part no. around down around my throat yeah, and yeah, yeah, the yeah. mesh, I could still spit on them if so I really they're wanted just, to. Pretty much what you're explaining, bro, is they're just torturing yeah, you. It's just it's tactics. Just torture. Yeah, it's just tactics yeah. for them to get back or punish you us. You were not, at no risk for yourself. Yeah. They were just annoyed because you are being loud and carrying yeah. on. They didn't care about you spitting on them. They they just really want to put on their discomfort and trying to like semi strangle you. It's just a punishment straight yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, fucking hell, lad. So I think they were, to be honest, most of those guys that ended up becoming boxers and doing that to us. Yeah, so I pretty much put it us straight out. They probably bullied bullied as kids or yeah, yeah. didn't fit in themselves. So they're gonna come and take it out on younger kids or they used to be their little. Well, something makes them feel like it's all right to do that to kids, yeah. whatever it is in their past. Yeah. But it takes a special type of person to feel like that's all right to do to a, a mm. kid. Yeah. Like straight out, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And me even saying that as somebody who's had a violent past and a criminal past, mm. like for me to go to a 14, 15 year old kid and yeah. abuse a 14, 15 year old yeah. kid as a man that looks like me. Yeah. Well, it's put it hard just to right. imagine. I'll like, put it just I can't right. If a 12-year-old kid or 13 year old kid come up to me saying he's gonna fucking kids or fuck my mum or trying to swing at me, yeah. I'd turn around and ask the little kid if he needs a hug and see if he's all right. No, yeah, yeah, try yeah. and have a yarn with him. I wouldn't let that get it get to me. I wouldn't even let yeah, a twenty-five year old Or have a yarn with his dad. I, I wouldn't even let a twenty-five year old yeah. male get yeah, to my head yeah. that much. Um, if, they, if it's an adult, yeah, they're yeah. gonna crack it or not. So but, bro, like so this so this stuff happened when you're sixteen? Yeah. And how did it come to the point where it come out? So like, was there what you you like uh, told someone? And yeah, well, um, some process. Me and a few of my other brothers, yeah. shout out to Ethan Ostrow and Josiah and Cyrus. They actually still locked up in um, down in prison at the moment. That's it. Yeah, yep. they're talented two young kids. It was me, them two boys, and a couple of other brothers. One passed away, and a couple of others that were the most targeted was like a group of boys that we just fought back against them no matter mm-hmm. what. You no, know, we just wouldn't let them stand over us. As much as they would, they we just wouldn't. We would group of other boys that would smash the units up. We jumped in riots. We fought back against them, no matter how much they tried breaking us. And them two boys are some big units. So yeah. they used to, the guys used to oh, the big shit followers. themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethan and just yeah, yeah. some big boys. And I guess they're a bit younger than me. And we we're all down the back after they escaped one night. Cause yeah, they escaped. So what happened was the night of the tear gassing, cause we all got tear gassed. We was in a small. Like the cells, are worst, so the boys that come out of Long Bay and all these shows, they say these units that they seen of us in there oh, yeah. was worse than the isolation units there. That's, uh, They're like yeah. three steps long and no two way. and a half steps wide, including the toilet. And it's a hallway with no fan, no natural light, no natural window, just what the just heck? like lights, yeah, bright yeah, lights yeah, yeah, in yeah, your yeah, cell yeah. and then light, they, turn, they either turn them off or on. 
And once they're on... Sounds like a little storage unit. Uh, no fans, no air cons, no nothing. So when it's hot, you're hot. And when you're cold, you're cold. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we just got sick of it. And then, so what happened was them boys, they were in low security one night. And as silly as they are, there was a gym at the time. And they broke the roller doors open and yeah. I wasn't involved in it. They grabbed the weight poles, jammed it in the fence, climbed up. Yeah. And Ethan, the bigger boy, let all the boys climb up off his shoulders, jump on the top of the roof and the jump roof. over. And he pulled himself up and they escaped. Oh, yeah. Anyway, they got caught yeah. one at a time, like one couple of days later, a couple of weeks later. And they oh, had, but they, they made they made the break. They for, got yeah, out. Yeah. They, oh, Ethan yeah. and Josiah, they escaped yeah. from Don Dale about four times. Oh, really? That's yeah. shit. They, the, <laughs> the adult prison, Yeah. they skipped the right. You know the raise of wire fence that yeah. goes like that? Yeah. I've never seen the adult or anyone even attempt it. These boys skipped the old oh, adult. Oh, they out of the Yeah, adult. this was in our second right. Yeah. When they moved us from Don Dale, when we smashed, because we smashed it up after their tea gas, after, not we, technically the other boys did, yeah. the ones that were involved in the right, I wasn't involved in the right. Yeah. I got chucked down the back one morning, because when I was in Donda, they used to refuse my education, so I wasn't allowed to go to school, even in juvie. Yeah, yeah. So I one, one morning they brought me my breakfast and said I had to eat it in the room, and I cracked the shits, I threw the baked beans at the wall and told them to get fucked. Mm. They came back and dragged me down the back and put me down there, and I was down, I was down there for four days without coming out for a shower or nothing. Mm -hmm. And all the boys, they had already been down there for a couple of extra days before me because they escaped. And then we all got sick of it. And one of the boys, the younger boy at the time, 14 years old, and a couple of other boys smashed their cells yeah, up, yeah. ripped their things open. And, and Ben Keller, the boxer, one that I was talking about before, who tried coming in my cell just a couple of days before the tear gassing incident, he threw a pair at me through the, through the mesh cage and then tried coming in. Or he walked to the end and wet the paper towel and tried throwing it at the um, camera, but it kept falling down. And then Conan Zamolo, who's the guard that came out in the Royal Commission, because they ended up, because um, they used to do shit like film boys in the showers, film us getting bashed in the showers, trying to get other boys to bash us. Film used to make us eat dog shit, bird shit, whatever the fuck they wanted to make us eat and say, otherwise you're not getting your dinner, or I'll give you a chocolate if you do that, or this, that. Well, they actually went and raided Conan Zamolo's phone and found all these videos on his Snapchat videos asking young boys to suck it. Which one of you boys want to suck my dick? Which one of you boys want to suck my dick? You serious? To young indigenous kids that come from communities that only just learn English for starters, some of them. And he goes and lets one young fella out in the middle of the night to go to the toilet, walks into the toilet, and as he's doing a piss, he's saying, what you, walking up with his Snapchat, what you doing, you dog? What you doing, you dog? Yeah, and the other one was of him encouraging kids to eat bird shit yeah, yeah, and in yeah. the Royal Commission he says um, the reason why he asked the kids to suck his dick is because he had a good good relationship with the young kids and this and that and he was having a joke so all this stuff that you just said is stuff that's already come out and been it's, proved in a court yeah it came out in the Royal oh, Commission yeah, Northern yeah. Territory Royal Commission yeah. but that's what I don't get but, but let, me get, let me get back to that question I asked you about like how, how, how did it come about like getting out by like so we were down the back this was um, just not long before getting tear gassed and a mad lawyer named Jared Sharp, who was working for the Northern Territory Aboriginal Legal System, uh, yeah, Naja, Northern, Northern Territory Aboriginal Justice Agency yeah, at yeah, the time, yeah. they were getting a tour around the juvie, and they were in the rec room, were just up, and they could hear us yelling out. Yeah. So they've, Jared's actually asked him, can you take us down there and have a look? Yeah. And he went around, had a look, and it was all us boys were saying, help us, no, help us, please, they keep leaving us down here, they wouldn't give us water. Yeah. I went three days once without water and they used to, guys used to come to the front door, yeah, you want water and tip it at the front yeah. and be smart and give the people next to us water and walk off. Mm. So they seen what was going on and went and did a few investigations and he managed to get some, hold of some footage of me and that. And then really? a couple of years later down so the track, yeah, like a yeah. year or two later down the track, I had uh, Four Corners con and some lawyers contact us about, yeah, yeah. about taking some um, like, a lawsuit and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. and then had four doing corners from abc at the time i thought that you know they were just doing it to help us and shit like that but you know coming to it now i've realized that mainstream media like abc were only interested in because they thought it was going to do something for them yeah. so they come and got the video footage i signed off yeah i let them use it as long as they blur out my private parts because there's videos of me getting choked up against the wall and being stripped naked yeah, yeah. you know shit like that and that ended up coming out on four corners and i was watching it that night i was in the adult prison at the time up in Darwin, yeah. I was an adult, and I was sitting there watching my celly. I was sitting there with my celly, and I was telling my, "This is a show tonight. Look, they're sh I didn't. I've never seen the video footage or anything before yeah. this time myself. But they told you that it's going to be coming on soon, and you're yeah, waiting for it. Yeah, but I didn't that. know exactly what it was, yeah. what videos, and 
before you know it, I was sitting there watching myself up against the wall, being stripped naked, seeing myself crying, seeing yeah. myself. And I guess I got a shock that same night. I tried hurting myself and ended, I ended up at, at risk in the adult prison. And then the next morning, they wouldn't turn my TV on. Yeah. And I was saying, why won't you come? I just want to watch TV until I see the mental health. You know, let me watch TV. And they said, why? You can't. And I said, why? And they was like, oh, what did you come down here for? And I said, because I was feeling upset because I had to watch myself being fucking bashed and stripped naked. Yeah. And they said, yeah, well, you won't want to turn the TV on. I said, just let me turn the TV on. I turned the TV on and it was on literally every... Oh, no every, way. Every station, every station, yeah, ABC, Sunrise, because the next day the Prime Minister came so out. become and a big a, outrage. Yeah, the next day the Prime Minister came out and ordered a Royal Commission into the Northern Territory Juvenile Justice System. The that's day out, it. it was the quickest ever Royal Commission that's that been quick ordered. from that footage, yeah. bro. It was that bad, bro, yeah. Yeah, like ex- I remember it, bro. I remember, and see how you said like it went all over every channel? Yeah. That's how I remember it. Yeah, I remember like just vaguely watching the news one morning and then just seeing that and it was just everywhere, bro. And it, like it was for a while. Mm. Yeah, yeah so it went pretty, pretty crazy. I guess. And how did how did you like how did that change your life, bro? Like, did people did everyone start reaching out to you? I bet you had. I yeah. could imagine, bro. Like, if that happened and you're sitting in jail, all of a sudden you'll have all these people visiting yeah. you. Like, I mean, like, I don't mean like friends and that. I yeah. mean, you know, like helping people. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. In a way, it was it was a good thing. It was a bad thing. Like the media that came with it yeah. and all the. I guess shit that I got forced to believe that I had to do, that I owed this, that, all these organisations that wanted to grab me and knew that I was going to benefit me because it was one of the biggest stories in Australia, yeah. even around the world at the time. It was around the world. When I was in jail still, right, if I still had a big, I got a big bag of letters. I was getting letters from people in the States, people in New Zealand, people in Ireland, people in Canada, what sort America. Of people? Just, Ran, random, just random just people, random people, random sending, people me mes- sending me messages, like letters into the jail, yeah. even putting money on my spends because... I had no money. I'm yeah, not gonna say yeah, that. Yeah. I was thankful yeah, for you it. Buy up money. Yeah, you? yeah, I was thankful. <laughs> my family didn't put money in for me, yeah, so yeah. for me that was a, that was the bonus. But yeah, yeah. actually, genuine, main, more older people, more and even the amount of non-indigenous people yeah. that gave a fuck that there's a young indigenous boy somewhere in Australia going through that shit. Yeah. I got well, all these really letters do. from they really do care, and bro. like all these letters just yeah. saying that they seen what happened and that they were sad and they yeah. were shocked and offering support and this and that. I literally ended up with about three to four hundred letters yeah. from all over the world, from the States to Ireland to New Zealand, from yeah, Canada, yeah. from places that I've never even heard of before. Yeah. And to have that support then is what kind of... And what, what, like, what responsibilities did you have at that time? Like, obviously, you being the person in the footage and the person mm-hmm. that it's all about, I presume that a lot of people, that you would have had some responsibility to either be making like showing up somewhere yeah. and like did you be part of the royal commission were yeah you? so i was actually still in custody when the royal commission happened i had to give evidence i got from actually, video link? Nah, i got taken into I the courts taken, from the yeah. same officers that actually bashed me oh that's <laughs> so i got taken into the into the royal commission and gave my evidence while they were sitting right next to me and i just at that point in time obviously there was a bit of me that said nah i shouldn't be talking about these guys because you got the whole snitching thing yeah, in the street yeah. and then i was thinking nah fuck that no, 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 there's a difference between yeah, snitching yeah. and fucking yeah, doing what's right and stopping these yeah. from doing what they're doing yeah, yeah. and i just didn't really give a fuck so i gave my evidence and went yeah. back and i was cop obviously cop of shit from the guards yeah that you know they was trying to get some of the boys in adult prison the bashman they all turned around and told them to get fucked you know because yeah. they all the boys everyone knows that when you're from the streets and you Grew up in that sort of lifestyle. Everyone knows that they still got the real, the real ones. They yeah. got morals, you know. Bash kids, you know. Women involved, yeah. you know. This, you know, you know. Everyone knows that those morals are there. So a lot of them fellas was turning around and actually wanted to go off at the offices. Yeah, yeah. But me back then, I'd say, nah, nah, nah. I was just trying to get my parole and get the fuck out of there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Parole kept knocking me back for unnecessary reasons, saying that this and that. I couldn't so get a little shit. Yeah, like say so yeah. the prison, they wouldn't let me out of maximum or medium. They yeah. wouldn't let me get low security. I would never escape nothing. Yeah. They just wouldn't. They didn't want me to have those benefits. So even no matter how well I behaved, I wouldn't get it. So they kept knocking yeah. me back. So my lawyers thought, fuck it. I was all over the media. There was protests. I think the Sydney protests got up to ten to 15,000 people. And protests for that? For Shat Don Dale, yeah. I think there was 10,000 oh, people. Set, all saying freedom of Allah. And I was watching this shit on the news. But the whole country yelling your yeah, name, that's, lad. That's actually, what, <laughs> that's actually what gave me hope to want to get out yeah. and to try and do the better thing. Because I've seen my whole life i thought no one gave a oh, fuck about it? me you know? really bro so I like thought, seeing all of that all of um 
people caring. Yeah. Just knowing that people care made you want to get out and yeah. stop all of it. Yeah, being a young kid, I always yeah. thought no one gave a fuck about me. I'd never be, you know, when you come from a jail environment, yeah. that's all people make you feel. That's all the guards make you feel is that when you get out, you're going to be nothing. You're going to be back in here within the next six weeks or yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And my whole life, that's how I was. I was out back in three weeks or three yeah. months or four months later. And, you know, my first, I got my first nothing sentence. to get out too, eh? Yeah, I got my first sentence, like proper sentence that about 12 years old and I copped yeah. two years yeah, yeah, for yeah. jumping in the back of stolen cars and breaches of bail and shit like yeah, that yeah, yeah, no yeah. serious offences and I mean you look around these days you're seeing rapists and pedophiles they're not even getting jail time Yeah, yeah. but yeah, you can put a 12 year old kid behind bars for jumping in a stolen car yeah but so like so what what happened with the Royal Commission yeah what what was the outcomes of it recommendations what uh, do they rec- do with the it? same thing that happened with the f- with the Royal Commission into Black Deaths in Custody. Yep. A whole bunch of recommendations and fuck all done about it. Seven, well, I think it was 50 something to $70 million they spent on that Royal Commission. Yeah. Not one guard was charged, although the evidence is there to show them. No what one got charged. Doing. Not one guard got charged. The recommendations were that they got charged, but the prosecution didn't want to, or DPP and all those people didn't want to charge the guards. So the man who, in the Royal Commission, yeah. going, like I'm saying it, what yeah. you said, um, who had videos in, in his phone of yeah. him asking little kids to suck his dick. Yeah, he wasn't charged. He didn't get charged. He didn't get charged. The same, the guy that, the guy that um, come up, I can say his name because it's all truth, Derek yeah. Tasker, he grabbed me when I was 12 years old up against the throat and put me up against the wall and put me down on the ground and stripped me naked. On that one, back when it actually happened, the police charged him. They said the thing, the judge let him off and said that because I... Apparently spat on him previously, not at this time. Apparently, I literally, in his words, was I deserved what I got. Got off, and the DPP. So asked, because you spat on him a different day. Yeah. So he. Could, you, I've got cleared of it just because I had a previous, just because I had a previous history of apparently spitting on guards. It so it's sweet four or five days yeah. later to come and choke you. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh so God. the police were actually. It's just funny, lad. In like, that case, the police were actually not happy that that or with the outcome of that case. And they actually appealed it to the Supreme Court. And they oh, so me, even the police wanted to Yeah, I actually, had to, I actually had to come back because I was in Adelaide so at the time. Bad, I would have been about 16. I had, to, so I had to fly back and actually give evidence at the Supreme Court to try and have him charged in the Supreme yeah. Court. Let him off too. That's He's still it. working there to this day. That's it. Yeah. It's funny, bro. Like just as soon as someone gets some type of authority, they it's like they're allowed to get off just things that no one else is allowed to get off. Like when you're saying that, like imagine someone like... So just say someone spat on you three three weeks ago, four weeks ago, yeah. and you're walking one day, you go up to him, next thing, snap kick him in the head and start choking him. And they go like, yeah. what happened? And they go, oh, the other day he spat at me. It's like, <laughs> oh, be, sweet, sweet. Like, I'd it's just going, so stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm on charges at the moment. I got done with a joint yeah. the other day and I'm getting charged and going to court. It's my first ever time with 0.83 of grams of a joint. Yeah, yeah. And I got to go to court for it. Mm. Like, I've been bashed, stripped naked, fucking tortured from people when you won't even charge them and put them in court. Yeah, yeah. Bruh, it says here, I read here that one of the findings of the Royal Commission was they actually found in the Royal Commission that juvenile justice centres that they even see now have never been designed as places like to rehabilitate more in terms of what, what, what is that finding I guess it's a punishment center it's not to rehabilitate if, that's if, what they found in the Royal Commission yeah, that, like they, if, that's, is their words yeah, yeah. It was their own words. if it was to rehabilitate the motherfucker must have sitting there 24 years old still suffering with the same problems if it was to rehabilitate the three year sentence that I did the two year sentence that I did all those six month sentence I should have been rehabilitated the first time not still sitting here as a mentally unwell yeah, and yeah, fucking yeah. I just yeah. find that very don't get me wrong I'm not yeah. surprised to learn that you know, I spent my whole life in jail and yeah, juvie yeah. and that. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm not the last one that's going to be shocked yeah. um, at learning that they're not rehabilitation centers. But I just find it really significant that the Royal Commission even agreed yeah. with that and made recommendations. And you said like no, nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. So there's still these places that are recognised as places of punishment. Yeah. But ah, uh, it doesn't matter. I just let them go. Yeah. Well, the actually the Northern Territory is probably getting worse. Uh, not after the after all that happened one of the young fellas shot dead by the police kum j walker yep. he was an ex detainee of juvenile attention center. and just not recently just recently another they said a 32 year old yep. aboriginal man was shot in palmerston yep. up in northern territory he wasn't it was 19 years old he's an ex detainee of juvenile detention as well fair income yeah so it's not rehabilitating yeah. if anything is setting all these kids up for a worse path putting yeah. them in that place 
I know it made me a whole lot worse. I was damaged before I went in there from the trauma, but coming out of that place, yeah, I'll never be yeah. the fucking same. And bro, I presume like it's all black fellas. Yes. Well, the Royal Commission actually found that it, most um, most periods it's either ninety nine percent or a hundred percent indigenous rates in juvenile detention. A hundred percent. At least in Northern Territory. I've only ever seen like obviously um. But tell I'm me, not, I'm me. not the blackest, but yeah, so I've only ever seen one or two to like three white, 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 white kids, kids come out come in or out throughout my time but you don't they come in for three or four days and they get out yeah yeah and they're gone again most of the time it's all young indigenous kids in there yeah yeah fucking hell lad and i guess that's just from the rate the yeah up up there itself with the rates and that yeah, up yeah. there but yeah it's pretty active guys. yeah but uh, it's it's it is it is a st- a statistic that gets talked about a lot and especially considering we only make up two percent of the population yeah, but yeah. yet you go to places like northern territory it's 100 percent juvenile yeah. rates and i'm pretty sure about 85 to 89 percent adult yeah, yeah. incarceration adult at there, yeah. black fellas and then it's, we only make up two percent of the population yeah it's a, it's a crazy start and it's a definitely a tough thing to understand they eh? um but i noticed like just even from talking to you and that like you really uh, you really define the point that you you know like you make no excuses bro yeah. I heard you multiple times like say like you you own everything you do bro is that a yeah. big part is that your a big part of dealing with what happened like yeah I guess for cause me cause you don't want to be that person sitting here like a victim yeah. like verbal and yeah. saying I done nothing and they just yeah. but you, I'd like you could have come in here like that you yeah. could have come in here and said completely different stuff you could have come in here look I was just I got locked up for this and they bashed us and I done nothing and this because people look this is what I want people to understand too I want you to understand like he could have easily come here right he could have easily come here and he could have like told you none of that stuff you only know that he was a reckless kid that done all this stuff because he's telling you You, they they only know because you're telling it you could have come in here played the whole part you could have dressed like a school kid and played the whole part like no nah, no nah, they, they just used to bash us for nothing this and that and you wouldn't know any different because i know that a lot of people viewing you know what the, yeah. the public's like they'll be like oh you deserve to get bashed yeah uh-huh. you know what i mean this is like, yeah. yeah that's how they are but i want you to remember that it's it's the only reason you know or you have that opinion that he deserves to get bashed is because of his ownership of what he done so don't lose sight of that he was a kid when he done it. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah. like, sorry, but I'll cut you off. Like, that's a big part to you. Like, of yeah. you, you're dealing with it. Yeah, definitely. I guess for me, it's taking ownership of the, the things I did and yeah. saying, yeah, I did this year, I did that. I shouldn't have done that to the guys. Mm. But also taking control and knowing that, yeah, I did that. But it doesn't give a right for a fucking 120 kilo, yeah. fully grown male to fucking bash the fuck out of me as a 12 year old kid because I said that. And always, that's the main thing that I'll be telling my kids to grow up. If they fuck up, take ownership for it. Mm. Especially if it's something that they need to take ownership for and to yeah. be able to move progress. So there's some things that if you sit there and you try and tell yourself, nah, I'm not in the wrong year or nah, yeah. I didn't do that. You, you can't move past certain things. Yeah, you're things. not helping anyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, so sometimes taking ownership for things that you do, like I'm saying, fuck, I'm not telling everyone that if you no, get charged no. and you go to court, don't just automatically say I'm guilty. Oh, yeah, but man, it's fucking, not that. Even if it's within but yourself, yeah, you take Yeah, within ownership. yourself. Yeah. If you know that you're in the wrong in the situation, like yeah, that, yeah. don't try and play the victim card. Don't yeah, come out. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that. If I, to be honest, if I think about it, I understand sometimes, baby, why those guys got angry and did what yeah. they did. But I'm not excusing what they did, but yeah, I'm also yeah. not going to excuse the behavior that I used to act yeah, up yeah. by it. No, I do know now as an adult that it was based on my trauma, my mental health, my behavioral problems that I didn't know now, but looking yeah. back at, it was because of that, the way I was acting. So yeah, I don't yeah. excuse behavior, but I also don't excuse their That's behavior. Good, good. So what was your, I'm talking no numbers here. Did you get like a payout for this stuff? The numbers don't matter, but. 60 grand I walked away with. Oh, if you're sweet to say it, Fuck. you can say it, bro. Yeah. What did they get? They can't, oh, so I took got, their money. Yeah. What did they got to do? They yeah. can't freeze nothing. It's all gone. It's yeah, just yeah. gone. No, no, no. So I'll just go for your yeah. own privacy. No, yeah, yeah. no privacy oh, yeah. about it. It's all That's gone now. I walked grand. away. Yeah, it's about four years ago. They settled. My lawyers took, I don't know, whatever the fuck they took. And I got $60,000 off the Northern Territory government for everything I've been through. Actually, and, considering that they've and done then, a full royal commission over it, yeah. sixty thousand dollars is, is cool. really shit, bro. Because cool. like, no, 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 I'm not gonna say who, who, but somebody I know had a car. Yeah. They got hit by a car, like a stupid driver, yeah. and broke their arm. 
and they got like two hundred and ten thousand well, dollars for well, fucking getting. Not it. long after I got the sixty thousand dollars, I had Marsh Blackburn firm ask if it was the right to use the evidence of me in a class action for two kids that I might even yep. go into. Yep, one of them yeah, don't yeah. fucking deserve shit. They nothing happened yeah, to me yeah, to yeah. sit back and laugh when all us other boys were getting. Yeah, harassed. yeah, yeah. The other one I seen him in Donald at once. Never does yeah. about it, and. They used my, all my evidence in a class action that just got them $33 million to sh- split in between them. Split in between, I think it's 1,000 kids, if that. I think only 100 or something applied for it. No way. Yeah. So 100, 100 kids splits 33 million. Well, however, they yeah, sorted yeah, out Morrison yeah. Blackburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing Morrison Blackburn being a big legal no, term, they would have yeah, taken yeah, yeah. 50, probably 40, I don't know, 40%, yeah, yeah, 50% 40, yeah, and yeah, said, yeah, here, yeah, all these kids yeah. can have this. So, hey, but, yeah. Going on from all that, how are you in Sydney? You're in Sydney, you live in Sydney. Yeah, I lived a bit of a... Jazz. Where have you been? What's been going on? So how old are you now, lad? 24 years old. 24. So yeah. all of this happened six years six years ago. Yeah, it'll okay. So you, the last six years, no, been a been big six years? been transit life. Started to explore. Started to experiment. Obviously, when I was 16, that's when I got my biggest, my biggest longest sentence. It was with the older boys. Then that's when meth started getting in there and a few of my, one of my brothers... Friends, when I was when I was at his house, said, "Here, try this." And I didn't even know what the fuck yeah, I was doing. Yeah. I was trying to suck on the pipe before the oh, cunt was even getting lit. And they put that pipe in my mouth, ice. and yeah. literally the next day, I ended up bashing some my fellow because he called a few of my mates black. And, yeah, that, yeah. and I just didn't know. I was already a kid with anger problems. That first Back time, I, the first time I ever had a taste of meth, I just <laughs> skitzed out and yeah. did something. I didn't knock the fellow out, and I took his wallet out of his pocket. Just ten bucks in there. That's all it was, and it wasn't the point. But I went and then robbery. the next day after that, the coppers knew that it was me driving the car. They seen me, yeah. and they seen the car. And he was talking to an Aboriginal woman on the side of the road, trying to arrest her. And he seen the car. And he jumped out, pulled the gun out of his car, and pointed it at the car. And was trying to demand me to stop. But I wasn't going fast towards him. But I'm not gonna last it. And yeah. the cop with a gun, and I shit myself. I put my head kind of down, swerved yeah. onto the other side of the road, and tried taking off. So then he ended up trying to charge me, saying I was trying to run him over. It got ended up getting yeah, done with yeah, endangering yeah. life. Use and two robberies, like two yeah. two robberies and aggravated assaults. Ended yeah. up getting three years, eight months, and that's what led to my sentence. The same judge, because he noticed that parole wasn't letting me out. The same judge actually went back. My lawyers went back to him and said, "Look, they're not giving him parole, and that can you have a look at his sentence? I've already done three years of my sentence." And he said, "That's when I had Bush mob, the original program, that I was going to go and do it." He said, look, I'll put him What's on. What's that program about? So it's an um, Aboriginal Rehabilitation Centre that mm. I actually fully support. This place is one of the places that I know actually helps young fellas. Where is this in, at? This is in Alice Springs. In so Alice, they, yeah, yeah. They've got a drug and alcohol treatment centre for kids 12 to 25, I'm pretty sure. Oh, hectic. Where they go out and do horse. They got their own horses. They do horse riding. They fucking take oh, them shit. out camping. Mad. Keep, they've got, you know, game rooms. Yeah. They've got doctors. They've got um, mad rehab, all, that ma- all that mad shit there. But yeah. except the difference is they're not fellas that are all there to try and do be physical and be that yeah. they're actually there to do their job actually give a fuck about young and want to also oh, is this them, place is an alternative sentencing no it's, yeah well a lot of kids they do go there they actually take in people from interstate as well oh, okay. so if yeah. people go if they just young kids yeah, mainly yeah. they try and get young kids especially young indigenous kids that yeah. are engaging started started engaging with yeah um the justice system i guess and trying to yeah, steer yeah. them off the other path before it gets too yeah, for late. Sure, for sure, yeah. so, and I guess that was one program I did st- go to when I was a bit younger, but a bit younger, I was a bit yeah. more. You didn't really want the help, didn't really give a fuck. Yeah. Nothing so helps you if you don't want it. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm still learning that yeah. today, I guess, on how to try and get help and try yeah. and do that sort of shit and get my mental health right. I'm not going to lie, I'm mentally fucked, I'm mentally yeah. unstable. It was just the other day that I was pulling scissors on the police trying to get myself shot from them. That's how fucked I am. Really? Yeah, I've just got this mentality now that if I see a police officer before I go back to jail or get taken from them, fuck it, he's going to kill me first because yeah, yeah. either way I'm going to end up probably taking my... If I went back to jail today, I'd probably take my life the first night I go back in there. Just my life's different now from when I came out of there. It's a fear of going back to jail now, not because of... People that's in there, like I couldn't give a fuck about the people in there. Obviously, there's more dangerous kids on the streets than there is in jail, but it's the fact of I'd rather take my life than die at the hands of them. Yeah. So I'd rather kill myself than have them kill me so that I can become another statistic. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. I don't want to be what everyone envisioned, which I'm lucky to make it out now, but I still, I still fuck up. So but there's still a lot of pain, bro, from it, like what 
There's a lot Up of pain. Until this yeah. day. I still, yeah. I still call it. When why, I get, the way your emotion change when you're saying all yeah. that, it's still a lot of pain, yeah. bro. When I get emotional, when I get really emotional and I start skitting out, I got this tender habits. I, I don't give a fuck. I tell them all the time. I ring Jay. Or I tell him you're a bunch of weak motherfuckers. I ring. So one of the boxers is a professional boxer. And I thought, fuck it. The, you know, if I went and tried to tell him, meet up on the street, and something happened, there's going to be two things. Him and his little mates trained. UFC fighters probably kick made in. So be it. But I thought, how about I'll be smart and I'll be a man about it. I will, if I have to fucking eat and make myself fat so I can make weight and jump in a charity fight night with him, I've never trained in my life. I wouldn't even train. Just jump in the fucking ring and fight me on a charity fight night. I'll shake your hand after it no matter what you did to me and you can't admit it. But if I win, <laughs> bro, you got to get up and admit to what you did on say sorry to me in the mm -hmm. middle of that ring and then i'll shake your hand anyway and be it that's my healing process no one got charged money but bro, not I, so, I heard you got some good stuff going on bro you love music yeah yeah so tell, tell me about that bro so um you, you make music yeah i just started making you some started so making i'm not that i mean i'm not the best rapper but i know i got a lot of people that watch oh, my so you rap yeah, yeah so yeah. i know a lot of people watch my story and because of my story yeah so if i can and i've just realized that being the poster boy for juvenile detention centers, I had all these organizations, activist groups that wanted to push me to the front of protests, wanted to push me to the front and do interviews and do this yeah, and do yeah. everything their way. But when it comes to me getting arrested at protests and shit like that, they weren't there for me to help me go and go out. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, uh, what's a way that I can get people to listen? And I just started oh, making music. Yeah, I just started, started writing poetry while I was in jail. And some of them got published alongside people like, oh, like Archie Roach and yeah. shit like that in a book through Queensland University. What they did, they published some songs and poetry from people like Archie Roach, I think Briggs was in there, yeah, myself, yeah, myself. That's smart. And then it led to on, like, my literacy and numeracy is not the best. I never mm -hmm. went past year six in school, but everything I've self-taught myself, reading my own statements or reading my own shit, all the Royal Commission statements, reading all that shit. Mm -hmm. I guess all the paperwork that the police would put against me and just read all that. I kind of put it all together myself, the words and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I can write, but I just don't have the literacy to write big words or fucking all that yeah, sort of shit. Yeah, so I'll yeah. sit there and I'll write my verses and shit like that. But then I got the likes of brothers like Optimus from Downside and Fluent MC who I started working with. They sit there and they help me break down it into more better patterns or use yeah. some bigger words, oh, take out you. words Where and they break from? shit down. Where so they're, they're from Perth. Yeah, yeah. Rappers so from Perth. Yeah, yeah, Fluent and Optimus yep, is yep. from um, Bank Downside. They were pretty big with the Cellabolix crew and stuff yeah, like yeah, that right. back in the day. Well, how'd you get to make them? How'd you link um, up so when them? I was in Perth, I started in Queensland when I first put my defamation case in yeah. against the media. So I put in, I just had to screenshot what people in the community, they were, po they were commenting on posts that the media would put up of me in their comment section and started rumors like apparently I was in jail for raping a 12 year old girl. Yeah. Um, apparently I raped an old woman. Apparently yeah. some old man named Andrew McKellen, who's actually a worker there, who actually I talked to after this, and he, I got no problems with him, and he had no problems with me. Apparently, he didn't bring me lollies because he was a Salvation Army worker, and I bashed him with a fire extinguisher and yeah, sent him yeah, to Darwin yeah. Hospital. So, so people were saying this shit. But when I first got out of jail, everyone made me feel like I wasn't allowed to defend myself and comment back or say shit to yeah, this yeah. and that. So I was sitting there because I had to be this perfect little poster boy. I needed to shut my yeah. mouth and be well maintained, be well behaved. And I thought that's what I had to do. So I just screenshot it, screenshot it, screenshot it. If I thought now, if I look back and I realized and I knew all those people that were telling me to shut up and do this and do that, knew that they were just trying to use me so they can try and make me look like this perfect reformed boy when really I wasn't no perfect little boy that's changed or anything. I'd changed myself. I knew I wanted help, but I wasn't getting that help. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't perfect. I wasn't clean slated. If I knew all that shit was all bullshit and all those people were all bullshit, then I would have been straight back on those comments. You shut your mouth, I would have said meet up or something. I would have told him to fuck himself. But I, I believed because everyone else was saying, no, you can't say anything back. You've got to be good. You've got to it's do It's probably this. better that you did it. It's probably better that you I just kick back. Yeah, especially especially when you know that half of them are all fucking fake accounts. Yeah, of, of course. You can't argue with yeah. internet people. You'd have just done your head so in. So I just ended up <laughs> screenshotting it and took it to my lawyers and they yeah. ended up suing the they put it in as a lawsuit yeah. def for defamation and yeah. held, we held um, the media companies responsible for what people in the public were saying in their Facebook posts. Mm -hmm. And that's where, right at the start, Seven West Media, they said, here's, here's 10 grand, shut up. Oh, I, really? I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. take that off you, so, all right? yeah. so I bought a ute and I drove from Queensland all the way around up to WA and just, I was stopping in Aboriginal communities and shit like that there, just 
I wanted to see what it was like in different parts of Australia and how other people live and shit like that. I was getting well, them all to, just getting them all to sign my card and give a fuck. It was that's 3, a mad 000. idea, bro. How did you come up with that idea? You just fought it one uh, morning? Nah, just... You bought a I was a young boy. Yeah, straight dude, across I was just Australia. Going, yeah, place by place. How long did that stopping. drive take? A couple of weeks? Stopping. Yeah, I, mean. I was just stopping and going yeah, in different places. Going, yeah. Victoria and, of course, my story, every place that I was going to. Oh, would, so they knew you? And like yeah, those, I'd yeah, put yeah. up, oh, I'm coming to this town, and people would be like, yeah, we know who he is. Yeah, you come oh, down to my community. Exactly. I've, got a, I've got a cousin there that's got a house. You can stay there. So I didn't have to get hotels. Oh, yeah, mad, mad. Every place I went to, they were setting so it up for me before I was even getting there. They would get the family's houses or. Shit like that. And one of my cousins ended up coming along with me. No short. He's up in Perth now. Mm -hmm. Me and him ended up finishing the leg gig. Came from Adelaide all the way up to Perth. And he was another good brother. You know, he grew up pretty harsh life on the mm -hmm. streets, shit like that. But even seeing him with young fellas, he's a bit younger than me. Mm -hmm. When we were going to those Aboriginal communities, like we rocked up in Yalala and they had a kid's disco and we just drove in. We just got there at like 8.30 at night. It was dark and they were at their this guy and I said, oh, a whole bunch of young black fellows in the Aboriginal community right in the middle of nowhere that we've never been from as soon as they signal they would jump down and it was like, yeah, I had my little motorbike that I bought, a little pit bike. Yeah, yeah. And they would all just come out looking at the car scene. They were all happy they just seen two faces coming to their community that yeah, they yeah. might have seen on TV for bad shit, but they knew yeah, of who yeah. I was and I just sat down at a yarn with them about my story and shit like that. And then we just enjoyed it. Where, where's that where's that community? So that was Yalla community. Where's what state walk? Where where? Um, Western South, Australia? South Australia, but deep going towards WA. Oh, right so up I in the water. In, yeah, so in the, in the Gibson, Pitt and Jadal Desert. No, oh, yeah, I think it's, yeah. I know the white white names for it. Yeah, I think Gibson it's um, Desert. <laughs> it's in the Desert. APY lands. I think they're Pitt and Jadal. Oh yeah, so, yeah, going towards WA and then we ended up going, yeah, straight up yeah, yeah. up to WA and then. And it so was, you ended up in Perth. Yeah, it was as I was finishing that. It was colors that you said. Yeah, it was as I was finishing that trip. That my lawyer said, yeah, now the Northern Territory government want to settle, and I ended up getting that sixty thousand. So yep. I'm being a young that's never got money before, never had nothing, always been that kid that came out clothes and shit like that. What can I say? I blew yeah. sixty grand in about three weeks, yeah. four weeks. You know, I bought oh, a nice three, four weeks. Yeah, I bought a nice <laughs> fucking, I bought a nice fucking home. car. I don't blame. I, don't, I, I know I bought, your exact mind state. I bought and I can two motorbikes it. so that. When I go, when I want to go motorbike yeah. riding, I got that extra motorbike that a brother can come with me. You know, dirt bikes. Yeah, yeah. But KX four fifty and a CRF two hundred and fifty race bike. Oh yeah, hectic. And I bought two so that when I got brothers, I don't want to go yeah. motorbike riding by myself. I want the boys to come if they can't afford one. Then they got the bike here that yeah, they can yeah. use. They can come out. Yeah, went out. Not come watching movies, seeing that chuck money. I'm gonna lie, I was grabbing money and just chucking it out. But I was yeah, also yeah. one of them that every homeless fellow I'd walk past here, by here, by here, by here, by yeah, here. Yeah. You know, I just can't say no. I did the same yeah, thing yeah. when I sued the media just recently. Gave, 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 gave until mm. I'm gone. And then when I'm gone, I, I don't really give a fuck. I don't, yeah, I don't regret yeah, my, yeah, At the yeah. end of the day, money, yeah. to be honest, money is something that changes people. And I see that a lot, especially within the indigenous community. Once indigenous leaders and shit like that start making money, they start changing. Brother, it's all communities. Yeah. I, I get, I get what you're saying. It happens in the indigenous mm. community. It happens in every community on earth. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, nothing specific but when I look to any at it, race, by like, But when I do look at it, that's yeah. not every single person. Like, now when I look at it... No, even, that's not all people. Like, even when I look yeah. at it, it, with that money that I got from the media or that I got from... Yeah. When I look at it now, at the end of the day, I didn't know no one's shit. So what I do with that money, I sh really, I didn't have to explain. No, I didn't have to. Yeah, but a lot yeah. of people saying, oh, he got this, he got that. But really, when I look at it, I went through that. Yeah. I, I was the guy that sued them and I was the guy that sued the media. Oh, you do it so you know you, what well, that's your money, right? Well, yeah. I really, I, should, no, I, I didn't have to, answer, yeah. yeah, I didn't really have to give a fuck. So it kind of makes it pretty shocking when you see people in the community, how they're always quick to try and attack someone and yeah. bring them down. Yeah. Like, you know, you see brothers like Kid Laurie over oh, there. Oh, like you, they're saying like that you, you should have gave it back. Yeah, like yeah, you see brothers, like, yeah, nah, even nah, like you see brothers like Kid Laurie <laughs> over there killing it, yeah. making what you did that's fucking awesome. That's good on him. There's another brother, they don't know, just because he's over there and killing it. You don't know no shit. Oh, you don't need I'm, to come back I'm here. I'm glad you said that because you know what? Like, um, there's a couple younger fellas in, in the hoods I live in, mm. or Lou Redfern, this and that, that like to run him down and they think that he owes, he, he yeah. somehow owes them something. Yeah. Like, but like, you know what I mean? But when and I, I look just, at it now, you don't know no yeah. shit. Like, when and he I was, even got a when few people that, that I when think he was they, doing the hard times, was yeah. they doing shit for him? Yeah. Was they putting a roof over his yeah, head? Was yeah, they yeah. putting food on yeah, his table? Yeah. No, no. At the end of the day, what he's doing, human if someone can make yeah. it... People get upset. If he can make it, fucking, that's one yeah. succeeding. We all succeed. At the end of the day, he's still putting young black kids on the map. He's yeah, putting... Yeah, yeah. He's up higher than Angels, any, right? any, especially any indigenous... Yeah, especially than any indigenous artist has ever gone. 
He's over there making music with the lads. Yeah, but you're getting off track, bro. You're young with the two fellas that you met in Perth, bro. Your oh, music. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Up there and down side. So yeah. I was up there after I finished that and another big um, protester up there, Merv and Eads. Eads runs a uh, program for fellas coming out of jail and helps them get into... Um, it's called Nalamaya. It helps them do their certificates and get them into yeah. mines and do with it shit like that. And I was just at a, at a yarn with him. I think it was at... Um, on January 26th, I think it was on Invasion Day, it yeah, was at yeah. the Invasion Day rally concert after it, where he said, oh, yeah, look, I want you to see something. And one of the brothers up on stage rapping, his name was Benny Bajar, another mad brother of ours. Yeah. I actually met him for the first time. He was singing this song, and, I was sitting there, and he's like, listen, listen, Mervyn was saying, listen. And then one of his songs, he goes, next to my Don Dale brothers with that hood on my face. And I was thinking, what? I was shocked. And he looked down, and this was the first time seeing me while he's actually on stage performing it. And that was the first time he actually seen me and he wrote those lyrics about me. Oh, yeah, And he's really? like, fuck yeah. And then after that, I met him and then he, which he, he's in a group called Downside. He introduced me to Optimus and shit like that. And I, he gave me free tickets a couple of weeks later to a big gig that they were doing with people like Briggs and Trials and shit. Yeah. And they gave me VIP backstage. He said, come, come down. No, no, I was like, fuck yeah, I've never really been. Mm. So I went down, met him, just at Yarn, had a few drinks with him, shit like that. And then I got locked up a couple of years later in Casarina. And I seen hip hop program. Where's that at? Casarina. It's um up in Perth. It's oh, yeah, the maximum yeah, yeah. security in Perth. And they had and a hip hop program there? Yeah, they had yeah. a hip hop program. And I thought, and I seen Scott Griffiths. And I was thinking, I swear that's Optimus. I thought, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought, fuck it. I put my name down. And then when I went in, he's like, he come up. He remembered me straight away. He's like, hey, come by. You know, he said, I've got to keep casual because because I work here. You know, can't make what not. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, but when you get out, if you want to get out, get out of shit and you just want to make some music for fun come around and see me so I just thought fuck it if there's someone that's genuine like that yeah. I've always been the type of not to grasp an opportunity or take yeah, it yeah. He, he's a genuine he loves helping young fellas he loves doing what he does he goes into all the jails juvenile detention centres and does workshops and shit that's making what he music. does yeah he makes, that's makes he does right there makes music <laughs> well he actually said if he's any of you want to beat exact he's happy to send some beats that's so funny bro like the exact same thing you said Solo does yeah. right there bro I was in um, jail bro and I remember like 10 years ago hey, bro Ten years ago, and he done the exact same thing. Uh, rap workshop, I put mm. my name down. I remembered him, bro, because he, he works with my manager. Yeah, um, like they're part of the same crew. You know what I mean? And he yeah. goes, bro, like this. Uh, I go, bro, I know that lad. He, he does fucking workshops in jail like that. Some they see, bro. See how what you? That's like a story in front of your face about the effectiveness yeah. of what you do. Yeah, you're true, bro. Like, yeah. So, so anyway, bro, it was like, that. It was that program there, and then when I got out, yeah, he ended up invited me over his house, I was just going over his house and making some music and for me it wasn't that even you know, I don't I don't still don't have plans to stay to be this big famous rap artist yeah, or yeah. this and that. I don't care where it takes me. It's me getting it out in an emotional mm-hmm. I'm gonna I get too an emotional mess sometimes where I still yeah, I just yeah. break down. I'm crying in my room. I start I feel like I'm still that scared little boy sometimes. So I just wanted to try and get that shit out. All the people that watch my story for the boy in the hood, this and that. Listen, if they want to listen to the way I speak or listen to what I do, instead of going to these protests and getting chucked out and being this puppet for other people, I just wanted to express it through music. So I was sitting there and... You wanted, to, you wanted them to see the real you. Yeah, and yeah. I guess I wasn't... This one song, it just came up, this beat was in there. We made this one song called Trauma where we actually... I used these... Um, Andrew Bolt did this thing and said that I should blame my culture, blame this, um, blame everything for what happened to me on my culture, my people, my family. So I did this whole little verse there where I said people like Bolt talking shit, but I just brushed it off and shit yeah. like that. And I was just, I guess, talking back, but in a positive way where I can't get in trouble. Made that song and then got that out. It was just a little bit half basic, you know, just yeah, yeah. pretty shit, to be honest, if I've made, like, made my, rap, my rapping skill was pretty shit. Made but that was, in jail or out? No, nah, out of jail. Yeah, I yeah. made that at his house in, in yep. a couple of hours, Perfect. but it was, wasn't the best, like, mm. wasn't, I'm not the best rapper, but it, yeah, it was yeah. good. And then... I went back around there a couple, of days, like a couple of weeks later to make another track. He just had a beat, and because I didn't have a verse written down, I just put the beat on. We was just sitting there, just yarning like brothers while he was playing around with the beat and shit like that. And he just put the beat on, it and I just said, I'll just try to freestyle it. No? Yeah, so yeah. he just chop and change. I just freestyled it to where I could, and then it stopped, and yep. then keep going, stop. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up coming up with a good verse. And then a couple That's of weeks right. later, there was two um, brothers up in Perth that are pretty well-known rappers up there and Yazza is a videographer now and he does fucking everything for all the boys up there with the mad in the rap scene up in Perth with videos yep. and makes all their videos and produces raps what's his name? his name's Yazza 
I think I've seen him, bro. Yeah, he's, is, I think is he like tall, like sort of big yeah, black tall, fella, tall big fella. Yeah. And he made a, a bro. Did, did he make a song yeah, against Mr. Did, AK or something? Yeah, that's did, him. That, yeah, he did that. Yeah, this, yeah. bro. That's why I was thinking when you said that name, bro. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah he he did that So one, he yeah. does. Um, he helps helps everyone yeah. out there doing raps and that. Yeah, so I knew of knew of him of them. And yep. another brother, Fluent, who I've become real close now, is one of my closest brothers. Yep. I knew, knew of them, obviously being a young fella and looking up to other black fellas and seeing what they were doing with that, with the rap scene and shit like that yep, up yep. there. Especially Fluent, because Fluent's someone that he don't rap about. He's in group yep. different. He raps all about culture and how he can try and use our culture to unite and try and be better as people and rapping about the history and shit like yep, that. Yep. Where he has a bit different but he still makes bangers he raps about shit like that too yeah. but he also raps with like bangers you know and um he yes. made a song bro tell me the other um the other black fella that raps he made a song with another little song bro. he raps like little quick yeah like, little mace he raps that's in an american brother. style like yeah. bone thugs yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he's, that, he's another freak yeah, yeah. he's um i think png and ti is from is up he, Queens, yeah, yeah, originally yeah. from queensland i'm pretty sure but yeah, he came over to Perth for a bit and he was yeah, yeah. making music with Yaz and nothing. Oh, so all these lads are from Perth. Yeah, I actually yeah. met, or well, I was talking to Little Mace actually before I went up there because I liked his music too and reached out to him. He recognized my story and shit yeah, like yeah. that. And it was, me and him was young, me and him talk every now and then. He's pretty good. He's a good too. I respect what he does yeah. as well because he puts back in for community, you know, who jumps up and takes his festivals out to places where other big artists wouldn't take them to and yeah. gives, and all the young black kids, whether you're a black kid from Fiji or every, yeah, yeah. if you're a person got every, every loves that kind of like he's just got like you said yeah. like bone thugs yeah. and every, every gun loves bone thugs yeah. and so every just fucks with his style fucks yeah, with his yeah. vibes and he puts positive shit into gangsters sort of vibes like bone thugs but puts it all in positive shit yeah, yeah. so like every love they come out and gangster video clips mad video yeah, clips shit like that but when yeah, it comes to yeah but when yeah. it comes to um Yaza and Fluent that's when Scotty Scotty said like Opto from Downsides, he's like, I've got um, Fluent and Jazza coming over this week so they can finish, they'll finish off one of their songs called Catch Me. Yeah. And he said, they're coming in to record something, you want to come and hang out, you know, just it'd be good to, for you to meet them and just hang out with them. I thought, fuck it, yeah, you go, I've got nothing enough to do. Yeah, so yeah. I went into the studio while they were recording that and then me and him had already finished recording a verse, not strong, my, my verse wasn't strong and I thought, fuck it. When they finished recording, I was like, yeah, bro, can we play our one so I can show them? Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, fuck it, I've always had something to hold me back from yeah. trying to pitch it out. I thought, fuck it, if, if I can do something to hustle myself, try and get someone else on there or try and get someone big like that to jump on the track yeah, or yeah. even hustle one of my brothers, I, like hustle yeah. for my brothers, even if I know like my brother Fluent is mad, I'll hustle his music. There are people over here that I know like Brother Earth Boy and yeah. connect him up with the brothers that I know and try and get that love back for him because as an artist, yeah, I threw him, I've, Threw him a verse and Yaz was a bit like, oh, and bit, he didn't really, want, he didn't really fuck with it. And that's fair enough. It wasn't really his style, and he didn't really want to jump on it. But Fluent turned around and said, "Bruh, I love your story. I love the story. I love what it's about. I'll chuck a verse on it." And he actually messaged me the next day and said, "Cause I got a verse done already." Mm -hmm. And then from there, me and him recorded that song and had a bond like no other. He was the only, only brother. Is that song out? Yeah, it's called Always Was. We did that for Nadoc week two years ago. Do you put, do you put, where do you put music? You put music on Yeah, YouTube? it's on his Spotify account Spotify, and yeah, YouTube. Yeah. I haven't made it. Yeah, I haven't yeah, even yeah. made a oh, Spotify yeah, account yeah, yeah, yet. Because yeah, yeah. I actually ended up getting locked up. I didn't get to finish my strong backing vocals or anything. I ended up getting locked up in Perth again. Yeah. Long after, Not long after. And he was the only brother that came visit me, put money in for me and actually answered my phone calls. Yeah. And I can say that that's... When you go to jail, you then that's when you know who the real brothers are yeah, and who, yeah. who is real and who is not. It was the only brother that would answer my phone because the only brother that would come out and visit me, all that shit. So I knew that it was a real brother. And when I got out, made him come close. I ended up having um, a son and I made him the godfather because I seen the way he is with his kids and I seen the way he is and I respected that. And I said, yeah, you know, we come real close. Yeah, bro. He ended up coming down to Sydney just not long ago, a couple of weeks How'd back. How did you end up here, bro? So, like, how'd you end up in Sydney now? Yeah. I was getting brought back and forth, back and forth. People protesting and this and that. I ended oh, up yeah. coming used to sit, coming, getting used to so Sydney. So just by visiting here, you end up like staying yeah. one day, you got used yeah, to Yeah, my it. partner's from Cabbage Tree Island. Oh, yeah. It's a small mission that they just got impacted by the floods you just recently. So, mad shout out to Cabbage Tree Island yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and all the more back there. Hectic. But, um, yeah, so we ended up coming back over here. I said, ah. Got back on the drugs really bad up in Perth to the yeah. point where I was letting older boys shoot me up and everything. Yeah, like I always looked yeah. down, I'm not gonna lie, I always looked down on injecting, I always 
thought that I was sickening and I ended to the point where I ended up finding myself doing it myself and I was like, fuck. Most of the time when I was even trying to shoot myself up, I probably wasn't even putting it in the vein and yeah, that probably yeah. I was just putting it in. Yeah. It, but it wasn't me using drugs. I guess I wasn't doing it for fun. I wasn't doing it for habit. Yeah. I just tried suicide so many times that doing that sort of shit, getting on drugs, I was hoping that I was going to die eventually doing something or doing something stupid that that would lead into dying. I guess I just hated the world. I hated everything. I hate I still get that like that sometimes where I just hate everything, hate everyone, hate still everything. Still with your missus now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You still but, writing music? Yeah, still write music yeah. now, yeah. yeah. I just got um, another song that me and my brother Fluent is yep. writing again and we just finished off our verses and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, with, luckily with the connections of brothers like Earthboy and that yeah, yeah. and um, Fresh the Lion, yep. you know, people like that who have reached out to me and still stay as su- like real mad supporter. I mean, they've yeah. been helping me out with connections to uh, like brothers that go over there, went to the down and watched horror show for the first time, yeah. went down and even experienced that. He, um, Fresh helped me, hooked me up with one of his brothers when me and him wanted to, because um, shit, I can't use recording studio equipment myself. I yeah. can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I had nowhere to record. And when I'm not, when I don't have my brother like fluent yeah. that's around, I get a bit lazy and don't tend to want to record. And it's yeah, hard yeah, to record yeah. our both first from different places. Elfresh yeah, hooked that. So. Okay. Fresh hooked us up with a mad brother Dan Revensby. Then he recorded that, um, my verse and that helped me record it so we could get that song finally done. Yeah. And it's just the avenues of having brothers yeah, that actually well. can want to help without trying to benefit off you. Yeah, it's yeah. mad having those brothers because you know that they're real ones and they're actually yeah, right. looking out for you and looking for the best, looking yeah. out for what's best. So we ended up. Yeah, making so music. is that a thing that you you want to you you're gonna start pursuing? I know you said that you're not trying to be the best rapper. This yeah. And that, but is that enough of a passion that that's? Yeah, it's definitely a passion. You're gonna I be guess. putting your own music out. Yeah, I got another song with less. So you're gonna be put, you're gonna be putting it on your own YouTube though. Yeah, like I gotta start. Gonna, I gotta start, start getting my. What's your rap name, bro? No, it's just, time to plug just, yourself, lad. Just my name, Dylan, Dylan Voller. Dylan Voller. Yeah, I, sick, I just bro. thought about it. You know, everyone type my name in. type my name in the Google. It's like the first fifty pages. It yeah. comes up with me. It might be bad shit. Yeah, but at least. But it's, it's also attention. Good. But also that attention is also yeah. gonna follow me over it's if good, I become yeah. an artist. But if I become an artist, I guess my artist goal is to be real. Is to tell my storytelling. You know, yeah. just storytelling. I won't jump up on tracks and rap about shit that I haven't done because I just look like a dumb. Like yeah, I never yeah. grew up in the Sydney streets. Like it's different when you grow up in Sydney streets and compared to Alice Springs streets. Yeah. It's fucking different, you know. Like here in Sydney, that you got like bikies, gangs, shit like that. You don't have that back yeah. home in Alice Springs. Well, even if you do, the black fellas out way. That's it's it's different. Yeah. You just growing you up. Mean. You just growing up with other black fellas that yeah, would just slug punch. Yeah, I get what you mean. Ten year old kids running around the yeah. street with knives, walking up the tourists saying, "What motherfucker?" And you know, shit like that. Yeah, it's yeah. completely different from there. I'm yeah, just used to having to styles of crime, fight yeah. against their own brothers yeah. and shit like Everyone that just on the cheeky, street. They just, just punch yeah, on, it's just m- more of that there. Yeah. Man. I, up here, obviously, people a bit more serious. A, than the most, about, yeah, yeah definitely a lot mean. more serious, with the, especially with yeah. the gangs yeah. and yeah, too, the too, streets. Very different. I noticed that, like, being in jail for a lot of the brothers from the con- even country towns around here. Mm. You know what I mean? Lads that, from Will Kenya and, 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 you know what I mean? Burke and, and Walgett. Very similar, maybe a little yeah. bit different, but very similar to Alice Springs. Wouldn't be yeah. much different, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, very different uh, things. But that's it, bro. Like, I, I hope you pursue that, bro. That yeah. sounds like something like you you, you like ju- you like doing. It grew yeah. on you, rapping, and you got a lot of support. All those fellas like yeah. helping you get get that music done, bro. Make the most of it. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much my goal yeah, for I guess goal. next few months. Obviously, I overcome the court battles that I'm going through at the moment. Yeah, try and yeah. release some songs in case I did get put back in custody and whatever happens but try and get a few songs out there even if it's just something to keep keep you occupied bro and keep you from fucking stressing out and pulling fucking scissors on hundred guys and that yeah that's that's (laughs) it that's what I tend to do I either if I don't let that in a good way like that I'm yeah, thank you, brother. Stupid, I appreciate yeah. you for coming here and telling your story, bro. Yeah. Thanks a lot, brother. Cheers, thanks for having me. Uh, good job, brother.